Colombia 2.1 stage for first mountain top finish. We've got Brandon Rivera on the front. Watch Egan Bernal in third wheel just decide that you know what. It's time to sit back a little bit. Drifts out to the side and is like, right, we need to get further back. We've got young ones behind him, then Ala Philippe, and then we've got a lot of EF education first who are dominant in the GC at the moment because they won the opening. Team time trial, although Milano in the yellow jersey, you can see his couple wheel back, has won two sprints in a row. A video will be coming on him because he seems to be a very underrated sprinter. Richard Carapaz is in second wheel and is looking really strong. At this point, we didn't really know who Team Ines were going to go for, but this is, you know, it's a very fast climb. It's 4%. They average 37 kilometers now at this 4% climb, according to Strava. Uh, my man, Miguel Flores, uh, who I think is going to be unreal, um, made a video on him. He won. There's Milano just pulling off there. He said he did about on a Strava, 335 watts and weighs 58 kilos, so not unbelievable wattage, about 6 watts per kilo. Um, so obviously that's still good, but for an 8, eight to 10 minute climb, it's not unreal, but obviously the altitude is going up to 3,000 meters. And so obviously that is still pretty impressive. So Brandon Rivera is just going on the front, absolutely drilling him. You can see we're going 38 kilometers an hour up this climb. But Younglers pulls off there. It looked like Younglers had cracked, but he hadn't. He actually still got a pretty decent time on Strava. Um, I think he just decided it was coming back. But anyway... Carapaz decides it's time to go, and big, big gaps happen already. Alaphilippe looks pretty calm. Then we got Higita, sorry, Danny Martinez, then Higita, and then Richard Casido. There's so many different jerseys going on at the moment, it's hard to actually figure out who is who. Uh, I believe that is Esman Chavez following him, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, but Carapaz is looking really strong. The issue is this climb's not steep enough. I don't know why they picked this climb. It's like a 4% climb. You know, we needed a 7 8% climb to really make the difference, because the draft on here... I mean, if you think they were going at 38k an hour before, they'll, they'll be going at least 40 now, which, you know, the draft you get off that is going to be unbelievable. Um, and you can see Bernal's just rode up. So it looked like he got a spat, but he's now fourth wheel. Um, and we've got a lot of EF education riders there, super strong. And if you notice, all of them are Colombian apart from Alaphilippe. Um, and obviously, the altitude is a, is a big part of that. Um, it's really hard to compete at 3,000 meters, unless you haven't delivered 3,000 meters most of the year, which Bernal and most of the Colombians do because they tend to spend a lot of their time uh, there. Or they live in Andorra, which again is like 2,000 meters up. So they have the altitude. It starts to stall here. I didn't really understand the tactic because I think in reality, the F education first, um, they'd lost um, Caicedo, who I believe is in the orange jersey. Uh, and then Danny Martinez is about to crash himself out. Here he goes. Oops. Um, but he managed to get back in. Ineos could have drilled it here, but I think they decided, you know what, we don't want to. Um, you know, we don't want any enemies in the peloton. Big Mig's in fourth wheel there. Miguel Flores, um, he's super good. Then we have Caicedo. Uh, no, sorry, Higuita in the Colombian National Champs. Well, he would be in the Colombian National Champs jersey, but he's in some points jersey. Um, and he's got a Colombian National Champs um, bike. But you can see he crashed out. He just wasn't paying attention. Um, Carapaz went across and he just clipped his front wheel. It was nothing, nothing crazy. But anyway, it's, he's all fine. They weren't really going that fast. Alaphilippe managed to avoid. But anyway, everyone's back together. Um, and in a, moment, in a moment, we're going to get a random Colombian bloke who, again, the names are very hard to tell because the commentary is in Spanish and also that they're not really defining riders. So I'm not 100% sure he is. Um, but anyway, he decides to go on, on a flyer. Um, at the moment, I think Bernal's just saying tempo. Just, you know, this isn't going to be the defining stage. I'm pretty sure on Sunday's stage, I'm not I think it's Sunday's stage, there's a really big climb um, which will sort them out and it goes up to crazy elevation. And that will be the winner. Um, like last year, the video I made was absolutely mental. It was like every single Colombian rider was racing at home for the first time, and it was it was unbelievable. Um, the the, the Vuelta Colombia 2.1, um, sorry, this is Colombia 2.1. Vuelta Colombia is like for Conti riders, and it's quite different. But Alaphilippe goes on the tap, but now it's just following. Again, Miguel Flores is there. Um, Higuita, Danny Martinez, Caicedo. There's that you know. There's if education have got some really strong guys. Um, and they're all they're all from South America. Or obviously Carapaz is from Ecuador, but the altitude still applies and then this guy decides it's time to go on a flyer and again the issue is is it's such a steep climb and it's such, such a flat climb there's no steep parts really that to get away solo is going to be incredibly hard unless everyone stalls and when you realize that you've got three teammates from EF two from Ineos it, it's not going to happen unless they massively underestimated this lad he's getting properly airy he's looking like a little turpster on a bike um he knows if he wins this stage he's going to it's going to be a good good result for him. Anyway, Carapaz goes, as you can see on the right-hand side of the screen. He decides it's time to launch. And I think this is a good, a good idea for Ineos because they, then they force they force EF Education um, to EF Pro Cycling, I think they're called now, to to chase. And Bernal gets a free wheel. And because it's such a shallow climb, you know, he's really going to be sitting in. So I think realistically, he's got a, he's got a really good chance. Um, Casita's trying to go across now. Um, 
but it's, it's, it's not going to happen, unfortunately, for the man. Um, Carapaz is looking really, really strong. And I like the way he rides. He rides in the hoods, um, sorry, in the drops, but just looks so solid and so strong. And I think he's, um, people think his Giro is a one hit one. No, I really don't think it is. I think he's an absolute class rider. And that everyone was saying, oh, it's just Roglic and nobody looks at each other. I don't think that's the case. I think he was, um, he is going to be very, very strong. And obviously the time trials he's not strong at um, comparatively, but he will get a lot stronger next year. And we're going to the last one and a half kilometers or so. Again, this this is a very, very flat, fast part of the climb. It's pretty much flat now. Um, I mean, there's not many times that you can say it's a flat road at 3,000 meters of altitude, but you know, this is Colombia, which is absolutely bonkers. But it means that if you're from South America, you have a massive, massive advantage. And if you're born at altitude, which unfortunately for Europeans, it's not possible um, because no one lives, I mean, unless you're born in a ski resort, no one lives at 2,000 meters. Um, Really, and with four hours to go, it's, these stages aren't super, super long, but they're enough to, um, you know, separate the men from the boys, separate the Conti riders um, from the World Tour riders, as you can see. And Carapaz, at this point, it looks like he's going to win. I mean, he is an absolutely huge advantage. And at this point, you know, he's just get aero and just bang it out and see what happens. Um, but unfortunately for him, uh, we've got some fast finishes behind. Uh, Sergio Higuita obviously is very very quick made a video about him as well i really rate him and his chances in hilly classics because he is rapid and obviously ala philippe is ala philippe and he actually does not affect this man as we can see here um and he he drills this back he's um the you know, burnout's um third wheel and then behind that we have danny martinez and then caicedo and higita's on his wheel and higita leaves a little gap and just surges into the into the back of ala philippe we'll see better on the helicopter helicopter footage afterwards um, but you'll see that he just surges past and then Ala Philippe, I think, realizes he's overcooked it. But now comes past, but a super, super, super strong win from the man himself, Sergio Higuita. And I think, you know, this is something, this is more to come from him. I think he's going to be a threat in those medium mountain stages um, in Grand Tours, stage wins. Um, GC, I'm not sure. And also, obviously, spring, uh, the Spring Classics, um, Liege, Brest on the Age, races like that. He can definitely do really well because he's a class climber. He's got an absolutely mental sprint on him. Um, so, yeah, these are the rest of the guys. Sergio Avila, I'm pretty sure that is. Um, he's seen as a sprinter. It's a pretty good ride from him. And then everyone else is, uh, you know, quite quite a way back. So we're going to go to the helicopter footage here. And you see Carapaz looks like he's a, an advantage. But I think sometimes you sort of forget that everyone else has been sitting in and they have that six, 700 watts that they can just turbocharge for the last... 40 seconds and that and they come across that gap super super quick while he'll just be riding you know obviously full but you know he, he's on the limit he doesn't have that sprint to get past um and he's just got to commit i mean he's helping burn out here uh, obviously burn out is it's tough for him because he's next to some really good sprinters but um you know that probably was the right tactic because by now you know he's got some top tens and roman dean sprint stages and stuff like he is pretty pretty punchy man but at this point you're like oh, he's got to win it surely and then alaphilippe comes past you see there's a gap and then Bernal is right on his wheel. And you think in this sense, maybe Bernal, I don't know, maybe he just mistimed, I don't know. But I guess Higita does have a, thing, a very quick finish. But yeah, Higita surges into the gap between Alaphilippe. And when he comes past him here, Alaphilippe knows it's, it's over. Bernal again tries to get as much draft off Alaphilippe and come around, but just doesn't have, the, doesn't have the gas at the end of the day. And Higita wins the stage. And with that, the overall... So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy. More Columbia videos are coming because I actually love just the whole culture. Come inside and they go mad for it. And it's just absolutely class. So cheers for watching. See you in the next one.